my respected brothers and my sisters first of all we all should make this dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allahumma ballaghna ramadan ya rabbul alamin give us tawfiq that we can witness this blessed month of ramadan and give us tawfiq that we can live through ramadan inshallah amin ya rabbul alamin in today's subject i would like to discuss about a very important matter that as a umma we feel like that we have lost the spirit the right perspective and we have lost this concept of having meaning in whatever we do in our life you know this is one of the challenges that we face we have to understand that everything allah subhanahu wa taala has prescribed for us there is a purpose there is a goal there should be some outcome after you go through that drill that exercise and we all know that ramadan is not just about hunger and thirst and deprivation of some desires is not about staying in just qiyam at night depriving yourself from rest and sleep because we understand that everything allah subhanahu wa taala has placed his placement of everything is perfect you can go and look all around his universe you will find that everything he has placed for a reason and at a perfect position our body sun moon weather plants everything so we have to understand that why allah subhanahu wa taala has placed any particular aya in quran at a particular place the quran we have in our hands today quran was not revealed in this sequence hazrat jibril alaihi salam has told prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam where to place which aya because the placement of allah subhanahu wa taala is without any defect and is perfect i want to invite you why allah subhanahu wa taala has placed ayas of ramadan in surah baqara there is no mention of ramadan in anywhere else except these few ayas why allah subhanahu wa taala has mentioned in surah baqara because surah baqara talks about bani israil talks about yahud talks about their mentality talks about their approach to life talks about their hypocritic behavior if you read surah baqara ayah number from 8 to 16 allah subhanahu wa taala talks about hypocrites that how they don't follow the guidance and rules of allah subhanahu wa taala and when you go in surah araf allah subhanahu wa taala exactly mentioning all the defects all the deficiencies that he has mentioned about munafiqin in bani israil and allah when even mentioning about ramadan for us allah says bad auz billahi min shaitan rajim ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum us siyamu kama kutiba alal ladhina min qablikum min qablikum la'allakum tattaqun like we have prescribed this fasting for the umma nation before you here allah subhanahu wa taala is reminding us again of bani israil my brothers and my sisters so really in today's khutbah i want to bring meaning in our action claiming the spirit if we are going through this drill of ramadan fasting what is the goal what i want to achieve end of the ramadan if i am 60 year old and i have lived through 60 ramadan and out of that i have fasted for 40 ramadan at least but if i am the same person 
who was 40 years ago, then that means I did not achieve anything out of this practice and this drill, this exercise, my brothers and my sisters. Let me give you the brief definition of Deen. What is Deen? Deen is nothing but sincere, sincere relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sincere loyalty towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we say kalma la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, and after that, whatever Allah commands us, there is only one goal to make us a better Muslim, to make, make us a better human being. When we say iman, iman through our tongue and iman through our heart. Then the next step comes our actions and our ikhlaq, our actions and our morals, our actions and our values. And the third stage comes love and khashya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hope and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the same time. Khashya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has given so much to me. So many favors on me. I don't want to do anything which can make my Rabb angry from me. And love because he is my Lord. He is my Rabb. He is my Ilah. He is my sustainer. He is my cherisher. That's why I love him. So this is all part of our Iman, my brothers and my sisters. And we all know if Allah will grant you another Ramadan, Wallahi understand the value of this that Allah gave you another year to live through and witness Ramadan and live through Ramadan. I want to remind you the hadith of Talha, Hazrat Talha ibn Ubaid Allah when he in his dream is standing at the door of Jannah and he sees two companions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu We all know that hadith that one of them was martyred, shaheed, and the other one is a regular Muslim. But angels, they allow this regular Muslim to enter in Jannah first, before the martyred. And Hazrat Talha, after he woke up from his dream, he goes to Prophet Sallallahu and saying, Ya Rasulullah, I saw a very strange dream. Martyred went in Jannah, after this regular Muslim who died after one year of that shaheed. And Prophet says, and that should be one of the reasons that we all should say thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has given us opportunity to live another year and witness another Ramadan. Prophet say, don't you see that He has prayed more than 6,000 raka of salah? In one year, minimum number of salah, the raka, the raka we pray is more than 6,000. And don't you see that he has witnessed another Ramadan and Allah has given him this opportunity to fast and stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and my sisters, keep this in picture that Allah is giving you this blessing of coming month of Ramadan thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are healthy, that you can stand, that you can fast, that you can worship, that you can raise your hands in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I want to warn you of that hadith in which Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that Allah chains, Allah chains all the shaitan in the month of Ramadan. They are chained. Then why do, why do we do sins still? Yes, one of the reasons is our nafs. Our nafs is free. Nafs Ammara is free. He can take us towards the sin. But there is another reason. The reason is the shaitan works you, on you and me for 11 months. And he creates that momentum that our reflexes are developed in such a way that even in Ramadan we do sin if we don't even acknowledge that. We don't even understand that because of that momentum that all 11 months I am used to doing riba. I am used to, you know, speaking false lies that in Ramadan 
that momentum makes me do the same sins without noticing without acknowledging without understanding that i am committing sin even during the month of ramadan so we should be watchful and careful of our habits that we are used to before ramadan my brothers and my sisters you know ramadan is all about quran wallahi ramadan has no value the value of ramadan is because of quran because that allah subhanahu wa taala has mentioned ya ayyuhan nas qad ja'atum mu'izatum mir rabbikum wa shifaa'un lima fi sudur wa hudan wa rahmatun lil mu'minin the quran is a shifa shifa is not a dawa dawa can fail to cure the ailments of our heart but shifa is guaranteed that this is a shifa and this will cure all the diseases of your heart and it's the rahma of allah subhanahu wa taala is a hidayah of allah subhanahu wa taala and quran whatever gets connected with quran gets the azmat gets the azma gets the highest place jibril alayhi salam is connected with quran that's why he is among the best of the angels prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam on whom quran was revealed he is the best prophet all of 124000 prophets quran comes in ramadan ramadan is the best month of the year quran comes in lailatul qadr lailatul qadr is the best night of the whole year and prophet sallam says whoever teaches quran and learns quran he is the best human being so whoever is connected with quran is the best in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa taala my brothers and my sisters you know quran is a healing quran is a mercy quran is to do tazkiya rectification correction of my heart and my mind and my thoughts not just heart my heart my mind and my thoughts the purpose of ramadan is taqwa and i want to spend few minutes on taqwa what is taqwa you know taqwa is mindfulness of allah subhanahu wa taala taqwa is that you protect yourself from doing any disobedience to allah subhanahu wa taala taqwa is zikr of allah subhanahu wa taala what is zikr zikr is remembrance and reminder of allah subhanahu wa taala taqwa is a station that you stay conscious in your heart and your mind about allah subhanahu wa taala you remember allah subhanahu wa taala in one of the hadith the definition of taqwa comes that you protect yourself from the disobedience of allah subhanahu wa taala you know in that hadith hazrat umar was asked that when you walk on a path full of thorns how you protect yourself your dress your body from those thorns kaato se same way these sins disobedience of allah subhanahu wa taala is like a thorn which want to get your clothes and your body and you want to protect when you are walking on this path of life in uh, my brothers and my sisters and for taqwa you know i will share with you two stories one story is about Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullah alayh as i said you know taqwa is remembrance of allah subhanahu wa taala taqwa is that you are conscious of allah subhanahu wa taala taqwa is you are always on alert that you don't want to disobey allah subhanahu wa taala imam abu hanifa says that i saw one man sitting in front of kaaba but he was ghafil of allah subhanahu wa taala his heart was filled with disobedience of allah subhanahu wa taala he was ignorant even he was sitting in front of kaaba but i saw another man who was in the market place of basra and doing his business transactions but i saw allah subhanahu wa taala in his heart i saw him god conscious I saw him God fearing I saw in his heart that Allah subhanahu wa taala is there that he is watchful and careful of every action he is doing 
So my brothers and my sisters, that means it's not the place which brings taqwa. It's actually your mind and your heart that how careful and conscious and watchful you are about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, there was one very famous Sheikh of Al-Maghrib Institute. He passed away, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Muhammad Sharif. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him, very young man. And he passed away all of a sudden, heart attack. He used to say one thing, that you know, I have practiced so much this haya in my life, that whenever I see somebody that I am not supposed to see, my eyes go down, my gaze goes down. That even in my dream, even in my dream, if I see a woman, my gaze goes down. Ghazal Basar. Even in my dreams, let alone the real life that I am looking at women, even in my dream that my gaze goes down because I have developed my reflexes in such a way that I am God conscious even in my dreams. My brothers and my sisters, that is the definition of taqwa. You know, as I said about Quran, that this is a month of Quran, we have received a very wrong message about Quran. I said in my last khutbah as well. We claim that this is a book of Hidayah. Look at our strange behavior. We say this, this is a book of Hidayah, this is a manual of life. And we don't even open and try to understand what this book of Hidayah is telling me. What a strange behavior. What a strange approach that we say that this is a kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has sent down this book for my guidance. This is a nur, this is a roshni. This is to guide me and I don't even care about opening this book and knowing that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about in this book. My brothers and my sisters, when you just read Quran Nazira, Wallahi, you just stay on the surface. Even when you read just the translation, you, read, you stay on the surface. But when you dive down in Quran and you read tafsir of Quran, then Quran gives you the right perspective of life. Quran is to shape our mind. Quran is to shape our behavior. Quran is to shape our mamalat, our dealings. Quran is to shape our whole life. This can only happen, my brothers and sisters, when we know what Quran is talking about. And that can only happen when you read Quran with some simple tafsir. Then you will see that Allah will show you the nur. Allah will open windows for you. Then you will understand what this Quran is talking about. This is not a book read by parrots like a parrot. Read and memorize and do whatever you want to say, but you don't even know what Quran is talking about. My brothers, you know, our biggest problem today is of yaqeen. That we don't have certain certainty whether this life, after this life, there will be another life or not. Whether Quran is right or not. Whether angels are right or not. You know, this doubt, shaitan whispers in our ears and this doubt goes in our mind. Wallahi, as I said, you know, this Quran is a book which can give us complete yaqeen. Because this is a promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Hudallin nas, Hudallin nas, this is another misconception we all have. Hudallina, this, is, this book is not Hidayah just for Muslims. Hudallina, this book is a Hidayah for all humanity, for every insan, every human being living on this planet. This book is a Hidayah for them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, وَبَيَّنَاتِمْ مِنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ That I have sent you clear Proofs, bayanat for huda and criteria that how you should live your life. So if you are looking for proof of the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about this universe, go to Quran and Quran will hold your hand, will walk you through 
the steps that you will have yaqeen and if you want to know what is right and what is wrong criteria go back to quran quran will provide you the guidance what is right and what is wrong my brothers and my sisters so wallahi quran gives us perspective shapes our mind and if you read quran every aspect of our life there is a issue between husband and wife there is a issue between parents and children there is a issue with the community member there is a issue about business every issue in this life you will find stories in quran go and read about you know about pharaoh and his wife go and read about hazrat yaqub alay salam and his sons so every problem we face in our life you will see the practical examples that allah subhanahu wa taala has mentioned in quran which can guide us that how we should behave how we should act how we should react in such situations my brother and my sister the biggest hindrance the biggest obstacle between us and allah subhanahu wa taala is our sins when i talk about the preparation for ramadan wallahi if you can stand in front of allah subhanahu wa taala and put your head on the floor and just say with from deep heart one time astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh just one time that ya allah i want istighfar from you and i want tauba from you of all the mistakes and sins allah will vanish from your record mountains mountains full of sins that you have done in your life just one time wake up before fajr 5 minutes before fajr my brothers and my just say one time to allah subhanahu wa taala so when you enter in ramadan there are no baggages and allah is ready to forgive no matter how many sins you have allah is willing to move forward and forgive ask forgiveness before entering in ramadan second thing reconciliation if you have grudges if you have some issues conflict with anybody before ramadan because you know the sahi hadith of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah forgives everybody but two among them one is the one who still has conflict and issues with his brother or his sister that is another third thing i will say if you have qarz loan of somebody at least acknowledge and plan to pay it back i will conclude my khutbah with two things one thing my brothers and my sisters you know whatever is happening in gaza wallahi try to make this ramadan a very simple ramadan and every time you break your fast thanks to allah subhanahu wa taala that he has given you food and bread to break your fast i will remind you the story of this old lady she is in her late 80s and you see her video that she got one piece of bread in her hand and she was crying like a baby and somebody asked her why are you crying this is a lady from gaza why are you crying by seeing a piece of bread she says wallahi i have not tasted bread for more than a month wallahi i have not tasted bread for more than a month and look in that video how she is enjoying every bite of that piece of bread my brother and in the end i will tell you one thing you know fasting everybody will fast qiyamul lail fa tarawi most of the people they will pray tarawi think about this way that what can i do to make this ramadan so unique that i will stand inshallah in front of allah subhanahu wa taala and allah will say what he said to ayub alay salam what a servant of mine what a servant of mine let's plan that we all can attain that status in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa taala what a servant of mine look at him 
that how he is spending his days of Ramadan. Allah.